CBS Sports presents the ACC as the Syracuse Orange plays the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. And a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kevin Harlan. And overshadowing an important game today for North Carolina State was the announcement yesterday by the NCAA concluding an eight-year investigation into the Syracuse athletic program with significant punishments handed down to head coach Jim Beheim and his basketball program, which included a five-year probation, vacated wins, a Beheim nine-game ACC suspension, reduction of scholarships, and a self-imposed postseason ban. Certainly a lot to digest, which leads us to our partner today, Dan Bonner. What's your read on this? My read, first read on this is, wow, those are severe penalties for Jim Beheim personally and for the basketball program. I think in the long term, that scholarship ban may be serious. In the short term, it'll be interesting to see what happens. We welcome in the third member of our crew right now, Dana Jacobson. All right, thanks, guys. We actually had a chance to talk with Coach Beheim a short while ago when the team first arrived here at the arena. He didn't want to talk about the sanctions, said that he was going to let his statement stand on that. But I did have a chance to ask him whether or not he thought this was a distraction for the team. And he simply said, no, not a distraction for them, not even a distraction for him. Now, you have to remember, it was a few weeks ago that Syracuse, several weeks ago, actually, they handed down that self-imposed postseason ban. So they have been dealing with this already. The focus ever since then, I'm told, has been on the present, not the future. And guys, as you know, the present means NC State today. Thank you very much. All that being said, it is time now for the AT&T Fast Analysis. Very important game for North Carolina State. They are really led by a backcourt where everybody can shoot the three. So defense has to honor one guy. Has to kind of look at the defense react, and then it goes into the corner. The third guy in the corner, he can knock down the three as well. That makes him tough. And you want to talk about tough. How about Rakeem Christmas for Syracuse? He's faced this kind of pressure all year long. He's battled it inside against heavy odds, but he's had a great year. Identical records for the Orange and the Wolfpack. Our tip-off is next for Raleigh on CBS. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. Napa Auto Parts conquer the job with Napa know-how. And by Applebee's new bar snacks and apps menu, only at Applebee's. Just say you never had it so good. They both come in 18 and 12. ACC records of nine up and eight down. And there's a look at Jim Beheim, and for over 50 years, he's been associated with the program. He played as a walk-on. Now he's in his 39th season as the head coach, which takes us to the Microsoft Surface. First on the court with the Syracuse starters today. In the backcourt, the freshman Joseph with Trevor Cooney. And then Vinajay, Christmas, and Roberson on the front line. Christmas, a terrific player, improving so much. Dan was talking about the big three of the Wolfpack. Here they are. Cat Barber, Trevor Lacey, Austin Turner. And on the front line, Abu and Leonard Freeman. And they are coached by Mark Gottfried, who played at Alabama. He's coached at UCLA, Murray State, Bama. And now in his fourth season in North Carolina State, three previous years, he's taken them to the NCAA tournament. Our officials this afternoon, Tim Nestor, who has been in 10 NCAA tournaments as a official, Tim Comer, and Tim Kelly. And here we go with Syracuse and NC State with the regular season in the ACC ending today. Roberson. And it's picked up on the play by Cat Barber. Through a bruise hand. If indeed he even touched it. I don't know that he wasn't expecting the pass, Dan, for sure. Now, why would you throw the ball to your center in that in that particular spot? And Ted Barber's saying he knows now. NC State turned, despite their win at Clemson, they turned the ball over 16 times. I don't think they can afford to do that today. Man to man, of course, of course, for NC State. Benajay has it. Shot clock is down to 10. Christmas down low. 
Freeman was there. To, that's a travel on Christmas and a turnover for Syracuse. Christmas is at his best for Jim Beheim's team when he can get himself down on the block, his back to the basket. He doesn't have to make a lot of moves or dribbles. That time he was about 10 feet away and he traveled with the ball. Syracuse, of course, opens in their 2 3 zone. Will Fag have won 4 5 in a three way tie for sixth place right now in the ACC. A win today would help them hold on to that sixth position with the tournament beginning in Greensboro this week outside Lacey. And that's exactly what North Carolina State can do to you. The defense collapses on the pass in the middle and they knock down the three. With a Wolfpack foul, and it goes on Turner, who is playing as a senior in his final regular season game. He's, of course, the transfer from LSU, a couple years there, finishing his college career with Cooney making a nice switching move inside. They try to put such pressure on Cooney to prevent him from shooting that three, and he actually has become very adept at driving the ball to the basket. So the Wolfpack won at Clemson Tuesday by five. 25-3 second half run was key. Barber with the miss. Cooney with the rebound. Here comes Syracuse. They lost it home to number two Virginia. 59-47 Monday. Out rebounded by 22 in that game by the Cavaliers. Now the big problem for the Orange throughout the season, even though they've had a good season, has been sometimes they just can't make shots. Benajay slips it inside. Christmas has position on Freeman. Roberson digging inside with a foul called on North Carolina State. And that's where you want to get the ball to Rakeem Christmas. Now, he missed the shot, but look at the attention that he draws. Nobody blocks out Roberson. He just goes right by Cat Barber. Now, I know Cat Barber's a little guy, but when you're down inside, you got to go block somebody out. Roberson, you see his rebounding numbers. He can be a solid inside force. He's a 63% free throw shooter, Danny. He's a sophomore from Union, New Jersey. He's coming off a 10.6 rebound game against UVA on Monday. But the injury early in the season to Chris McCullough, Roberson has gotten a lot more playing time than he would have gotten otherwise, which bodes well for the future for both he and the Syracuse Orange. McCullough tore that right ACL against Florida State in January game. Expect him back, Alan Hardy, for next year. You notice NC State, their plan is to try to get the ball inside and force the defense to collapse. Cooney's going to watch Lacey. Barber is outside. He is quick. And there's Lacey once again with a shot clock at five. Christmas was getting a hand on it. Picked up by Freeman. Nice series of moves. Leonard Freeman is an excellent offensive rebounder. He's a guy who knows how to get position. Just a very, very solid player for North Carolina State. He is their leading rebounder. Here's Caleb Joseph. Benajay. Cooney. This is around Turner. And caught by Cat Barber. It's a three. Oh. A boo. Christmas had a Robertson had a hand on it. I'm going to say it's off of. Now, North Kevin, look, look at Leonard Freeman right here. Watch the position that he gets inside. Now, he didn't get the first rebound, but because he had that great position, because he worked so hard, he was in perfect position to catch that loose ball and put it in. This is Christmas finding a couple guys on him, and he saw a lot of that against UVA. In fact, he sees it almost every game. But UVA, Dan, on Monday against Christmas, they were suffocating with their defense in low. But they are as good a defensive team mm. as there is in the country. And Rakeem Christmas, you see, he missed a short one right there. He has had some games where teams have been able to stay between he and the basket where he has missed some of those close shots. Now, they're not easy shots, but they're close, and those are ones Christmas really has to make. The average is 17 a game. He had 10 against UVA. Outside, Joe of the freshman, a three. Now that is great news for Syracuse because Caleb Joseph, during the season, only shoots 18% from outside. That's only his seventh made three-point basket of the season in 31 games. And then coming into this afternoon, he had played the last 57 minutes, 0 of 11 from the field. And just two points, so you're right. Good news there. As he gets the start today, Lacey trying to slither. And the defense is right there for Syracuse. Lacey again, and looked like Roberson was trying to hold on. Picks up the foul for the Orange, the first time Roberson. 
So the ACC tournament is coming up. Seeding at stake for North Carolina State. There's a look at the freshman. So the Wolf back here in Raleigh going for the fourth consecutive NCAA tournament bid. Good strength is schedule when you take a look at their resume coming up. And that's the key for Mark Godfrey. Since he's been here, he has tried really hard to play an outstanding schedule. The strength is schedule, number six, that is a key figure there. RPI, pretty good. Look at those wins, though. A win over Duke at Louisville, at North Carolina State. Also a win against Boise State, another team in consideration for one of those last spots in the NCAA tournament. So the Wolf Pack, uh, once again this year, the record not gaudy, but they've done what the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee tells you you have to do. Well, Packard put in two new ones. A senior, Desmond Lee's got the ball right now, and B.J. Anya, who's a sophomore from Washington, down low. He takes a lot of size, and that's a turnover for the Wolf Pack, number two. Again, 16 turnovers against Clemson. That was their second highest total of the year. They had 23 in an earlier game against West Virginia. And Mark Godfrey knows you're not going to get a lot of opportunities against that Syracuse zone, so you cannot squander the ones you do receive. Joseph for Christmas. And that's out of bounds, and that's a turnover. We're talking to Jim Beheim before the game. They like Joseph to put on a little bit more muscle, get a little bit stronger at that point guard position. Just a freshman learning, certainly on the fly. Learning on the fly, and he's really struggled offensively. They think that he will be able to work and improve that offensive game over the summer. And they're very excited about their recruiting class coming in, so they feel like the future is bright. Despite the sanctions that uh, we talked about before the game. Turner zips one inside. Anya is there. Boy, look at the orange around him, but he still gets it to go. Pulls the trigger, gets his first two. He just got off the bench. He is can be a very powerful force inside, Kevin, but you have to prevent him from shooting layups like that. You have to prevent him from dunking, and if you do those two things, he has a hard time scoring. Benajay with Lee defending. Nice shot outside. Michael Benajay, that's a two-pointer. At eight points against UVA with six rebounds. Monday up in Syracuse. So, was there any question is in your mind, Dan, how Syracuse would come out and approach this final game of the season for them with everything that happened yesterday? I don't think so. I think that yesterday was that they were sort of expecting something to happen, but they've been playing with this postseason band for a while now, so they're I think they're relatively used to it. Christmas got it. Here comes Cooney. I'm just sorry the band came out yesterday. I don't see any reason after an eight-year investigation why the NCAA couldn't wait until Monday to just let the, these kids here playing for Syracuse. They had nothing to do with it. There's no reason for them to be answering questions about it. Just let the kids play, deal with it on Monday. So that's the one thing that I really have a problem with in this whole issue. I just don't understand why the NCAA felt after eight years that they had to do it on Friday. Benajay with the miss at the other end. Freeman had the rebound. And here comes the Wolf Pack and 13 and a half to play here in the first half. You can't just throw the ball around the perimeter of this zone. You've got to get it in there, and that's what Travis is trying to yep. do. So this is the way the ACC looks. And what needs to happen today for this Wolfpack team, they need to win, and Miami has to lose at Virginia Tech for them to secure the sixth seed in the ACC tournament. You know, when you look at those standings, there's five teams ranked in the top 20. So the guys who are just below them, it's hard to get a lot of wins. And Iron Eight's actually a pretty good record in the ACC. Christmas aggressively across the lane. Anya was there. With that 7-9 arm span to knock it away. Barber was also defending, and Barber is going to pick up the foul. Joaquin Christmas, a senior from Philadelphia at the line. The CBS Sports app is the only app Syracuse and North Carolina State fans need. Get your scores, real-time alerts, expert picks, bracket games, and more. Download the CBS Sports app now. Christmas again. Syracuse as a team is not a very good free throw shooting team, but Christmas he has raised his free throw shooting numbers to up above 70 percent for the season, and he he gets to the line a lot. Part of him elevating his entire game statistically this year. Abu with the miss, Benajay with the rebound, and here comes Caleb Joseph. And look how quickly Roberson and Christmas mm -hmm. get down the court. Well, you're right. Puts the pressure on the defense when your big guys get down and get ready. Joseph with a good fake, and it was Anya who flew by, and then they tried to put it on the doorstep, and Christmas can't get it to go. 
But Christmas has missed a couple of those close ones so far today, Kevin. And as a result, Roberson picks up the foul. But what you saw from B.J. Anya, he likes to try to block every shot. And when Joseph got by him, nobody was available to block out Christmas. And again, Christmas missed one that normally he would make. Second foul on Roberson. With a win today, Syracuse can gain a share of sixth place themselves in the ACC to finish off the season and record a 19th win. The defense by Joseph who fouls him on the play. And that is the first on Joseph. Academy Award winner Patricia Arquette starts in the next generation of CSI, CSI Cyber. New episode Wednesday at 10, 9 central. Only CBS. Trevor Lacey, Alabama transfer. National finalist for the Jerry West Award, which is an award given to the best shooting guard in college basketball. He had 10 points against Clemson the other night at Little John. He comes in as the Wolfpack's leading scorer. Does a great job from beyond the three-point arc, shooting better than 40%. And he also does a really good job with that powerful build. You can just look at him taking the ball to the basket. Very confident player. Yeah, really good player. Syracuse is 3 of 10. Cooney at 3. Late close. Cat Barber got it from on you. And here, Barber is fun to watch. Speed to spin. The dish. Martin 3. Caleb Martin took that. He's a freshman from North Carolina. And this is a situation where B.J. Anya, he gets the ball inside, but it's smacked away by Joseph. Close game so far. The Orange by two here in Raleigh over North Carolina State. A lot of people weighing in, of course, on the decision that was handed down yesterday by the NCAA. Dennis, something you were talking about is a time Thomas talked about the 12 scholarships lost over four years. And I think that reduction of scholarship, it's going to eliminate any margin for error in recruiting. And for a four-year period, I think that's an awfully tough penalty. Gary Perry one of the top writers for CBSSports.com. Talking about, uh, again, the scholarship issue, which has caught the eye of so many here. Cat Barber gets the inbound pass. You can see the uh, lack of shooting by both these teams. Inside and gets it to go his first two this afternoon. Barber is a very active player. He's like really sneaky around the offensive boards. Gets about one of those every game. DJ Johnson is now checked in for the orange. Here's Christmas. Anya is on him. Abu. Well, Anya is a lot to shoot over and around. <laughs> he, is, he's, he is a load. <laughs> but again, watching Rakeem Christmas all year long, that's a shot that he normally makes. I think Syracuse has to be very satisfied with what they're getting inside. They just like to convert him. So Lacey's got the ball. He's a junior. Abu is a freshman. Caleb Martin with the ball right now. He is a freshman. And he takes it inside. Knocked away, 13 on the clock. That is an area where the Syracuse defense has struggled this year, defending the dribble penetration. Normally that zone is very, very effective against that type of play. But they've given up a few more of those this year. The Orange defense, number four in the conference and points allowed, number six in field goal defense in ACC play. Caleb Martin, lasering it inside of Bruce, shot clock at three. A lot of hands in there, and now a lot of pressure outside with a missed triple. Now, this is a Syracuse defense, Kevin, that I just don't think you can attack at the end of the shot clock. You've got to be crisp, and you've got to be attacking from the first moment that you get in the offensive zone. You don't want to let those seconds tick by and then be forced into a desperation shot like that one. And then on the other side for the Orange, their offense, number 12 in field goal percentage in the ACC. Well, they just haven't been able to shoot the ball, yeah. and we're seeing that today with their inside play. And again, there's Christmas. That's two traveling violations as he's trying to drive the ball to the basket. He can do that, but that is not his strength. The senior recurring, uh, Akeem Christmas, five consecutive misses to start this one. And a turnover and a tie game at 11. Christmas is a guy who shoots over 56% from the field. 
Wolfpack offense, number four in scoring in the ACC, number four in three-point percentage, and a top-five rebounding team within the conference. So all three guys in that backcourt get going at the same time. They put a lot of points on the board. We talked about that in the open. You're right. Here's Lacey. We're halfway through the first half. A lot of standing around. Lacey, and again, they converge on him, moves in for two. He's short on the play. But boy, they react out there. That defense gets out there and covers the perimeter. I'm, I'm not sure that Mark Gottfried wants his guys playing to the last, into the last 10 seconds of the shot clock against the Syracuse defense. Yes, you want to be patient, but you don't want to be passive. And I think they're passive right at the moment, playing in the half court against that defense. Benajay, Christmas is screen. Here's three of 12. Christmas looking for his first. Another miss. But the hustle there he still couldn't vacuum it in. Here comes Lacey. They've got numbers. And Lacey scoops it home. Pretty dive. Lacey really handles the ball well. He's fast and he is strong. And this is a great job going against the defense before it gets a chance to get set. He drives past Cooney and then just uses that strength to get the ball up to the basket. That's a good way to handle the Syracuse zone is beat it down the court. So Trevor Cooney picks up his first for Syracuse. 6-0 run for North Carolina State the last three and a half minutes. And here is Lacey at the line, who is the number six scorer in the ACC coming into this afternoon. The final game of the regular season. Final game for Syracuse. I think they're getting the ball where they want it, the Orange. It's going inside to Christmas. He just can't score. My goodness. Roberson again doubled inside. Where well, there seems to be a lot of congestion. With a foul called in there. Freeman has picked up his first personal foul. Well, Christmas, he thinks he's got a lane to the basket, but Washington just in the game comes over to help. And so thus far, they're doing a great job are the Wolfpack on Christmas, helping out when he gets loose, but basically having the defenders stay between Christmas and the basket. Tyler Roberson at the line. Four of his last six games, he's put up some nice numbers. 19 and 10 against Duke, 13 and 9 against Louisville, 16 and 9 against Duke again. And then against UVA, 10 points, 6 rebounds. He's played at least 37 minutes. These starters play a lot of minutes for They certainly do. Yeah. The deep bench not very deep at all, but Roberson wouldn't be playing those kind of minutes, as I mentioned earlier, without the injury of McCullough. So I think that's going to be very valuable for his development as a player. Chris is a freshman out of the Bronx. Turn three. Get retrieval by Leonard Freeman. Washington has come in the game for the first time. Kent Barber's got the ball. A lot of time on the shot clock, eight and a half to play in the half. With a move inside by Kyle Washington. Got a champion in Minnesota. And Christmas picks up his first personal foul. The Wolfpack have had their best success when they've been able to get the ball into the middle of that zone. Washington is a guy, when he's in the game, he's looking to score. Freeman, you know, Freeman's specialty is on the defensive end, setting screens, rebounding the ball. Washington is a guy, he's got to be scoring to really help the Wolfpack, and he was trying to score right there. Washington didn't play against Clemson, game you did earlier this week. As I said, his, he's not noted for his defensive ability, and so when, you're, when you think you're going to be in one of those rock fight kind of games, Washington is a guy that doesn't play quite as much. A rock fight? I don't think they'd want to be in one of those inside. They go with Freeman, Roberson, and Cooney. It's Christmas again double. I mean, every time he touches the ball, he's in a straight jacket inside that lane. Little breathing space there. On Survivor, white collar, blue collar, no collar. Some people will do anything to fit in, and others just can't seem to get along. Don't miss a new Survivor Wednesday at 8, 7 Central. Only CBS at the line is Christmas. Now the Orange are 7 of 7 from the line with Dan Bonner and Dana Jacobs and Kevin Harlan here in Raleigh. About 8 to play in the first half with Syracuse and North Carolina State. Huge triple hunter day on CBS. Undefeated number one Kentucky. We saw last week against Arkansas and they took care of the Razorbacks. We'll finish off the SEC regular season portion with the game against Florida. Stanford and Arizona on the back 12. All today on CBS. Turner, Lacey, Benigni will defend. 
how do you defend that? Mm -hmm. I mean, he did a great job with the dribble, driving Benajay back, and then with the step back and the jump shot, I don't think you can defend that. Lacey's got nine. That's an open three. Benajay, good-looking shot outside. He is a 40% three-point shooter. And he's a guy, when he has played his best, that's when Syracuse has had their best offensive games. Tip by Cooney, picked up by Roberson. Four turnovers for the pack. They go to Roberson. Christmas is right there to vacuum it in. Knocked away inside by Washington. And then a Syracuse foul. We talked before the game about the North Carolina State guards and the damage that they can do. They move the ball very well. Barber to Turner to Lacey. Lacey with that good drive and step back jumper. Three point game. This is the only player in the ACC that is in the top five in scoring and in rebounding. Well, Rakeem Christmas, I mean, if they're four for 17 and he's 0 for 7, the other guys are actually having a pretty good shooting <laughs> night. Rakeem Christmas has been besieged inside, but that's the way normally is. Anya does a nice job keeping on his feet, forcing Christmas to shoot over him. And then here Washington comes over and helps and blocks the shot. And now Christmas, he's got the offensive rebound, but there's Washington again. Every time Christmas catches the ball, people swarm around him, but that's the way it's been all year. And he's been able to score despite that kind of pressure. So a tough, tough afternoon so far for Rakeem Christmas. Lacey, Anya, Washington, Turner, Cat Barber, the five on the floor for the pack. See, Anya's just, he's not able to shoot that little jump shot. Cooney and Roberson go over there. Joseph tries to knock the ball away. Here we are, under 10 again. Barber again, using the baseline. Lacey, three. And here comes Cooney. Oh, Cooney waited too long. Roberson was open. Cooney gets it, collides hard into the table. And Cooney is the guy, he's been suffering from a bad back. Mm, I sure talked has. to him before the game, and he said his back was feeling better. Here he knocks it down. Oh, oh my. God. It's not going to feel any better now. No. <laughs> oh, oh no. my gosh. Final game of the season today for the Orange. Self-imposed ban on the postseason, so no ACC tournament. No NCAA tournament. Anya. <laughs> I bet he practices that shot a hundred times a day. But they always have those big men do catch, spin, and fire. And right there, close to Joseph on top. Christmas Benajay, Cooney, and Roberson. The orange five on the floor. Really doing a great job chasing Benajay. Don't really have to get out and cover Joseph. Cooney, Roberson. Washington the rebound. See, now, if you're Roberson, you have to be prepared to shoot a little jump shot right there. The defense was under the basket. Roberson caught the ball and took it into deep trouble. Always getting closer isn't a great idea. Turner, rebound by Christmas. He's got six rebounds. He's the number four rebounder in the ACC. King Christmas is also the third leading scorer in the conference. Joseph only played three minutes against UVA on Monday. Christmas. And that's that's the team Christmas that we've come to know. Again, Anya doing a nice job staying on his feet, making Christmas shoot over him, but Christmas knocked that one down. This is the biggest lead for the Orange of five. They're on a 9-2 run right now. And under five to go. Washington inside with a corkscrew shot. Picked up by Roberson. Joseph the other way. Syracuse has lost eight of their last 11. Benajay with a long one. Christmas reels it in. New shot clock. Here we go. Well, if anyone thought that Syracuse might be distracted by what happened yesterday in the announcement, it hasn't shown. Cooney nails one from outside. No, you're absolutely right, Kevin. And Cooney's a guy, he doesn't need a lot of time or space when he gets hot. His opponent can be in real trouble. Cooney's got five. 
It's the biggest lead for Syracuse this afternoon in Raleigh. Syracuse with the eight-point lead, and one of the reasons is they've finally been able to get their inside-outside strength going. Here, Christmas, he has he has struggled inside, but he gets that one going, and so now Christmas scoring inside, the dribble penetration, they lose Cooney. You can't lose Cooney. And again, for North Carolina State, they're really the major story here today in terms of the game, a win and a Miami loss at Virginia Tech. They get the number six seed in the ACC tournament, which begins later this week. Four to play in the first half. Caleb Martin. All right, Kevin, it's also a significant game for North Carolina State in terms of the NCAA tournament. Yes. They, they are probably in pretty good shape in terms of being in the tournament, but where, where they will play, what their seed will be, I don't think they can afford to lose this one and then maybe get upset in the first round of the ACC tournament. Cat Barber, who over the last seven games, Dan, has been averaging 15 points a game after a horrendous eight-game stretch where he was really struggling with his shot. He's, he has suddenly had decided he was going to shoot the three, Kevin. <laughs> he went through a 20-game stretch where he never took more than two three-point shots. Roberson, 16-footer is there. I just, I really like Roberson. Mm -hmm. His development, you know, he's got he's got a ways to go yet, but he can hit that little facing jump shot. He's a pretty good rebounder. He's starting to learn what he needs to do in the back line of that zone defense. So we're seeing he can score with his six. He's also the 11th leading rebounder in the ECC. He's got four boards this afternoon. The double team Freeman. Martin inside. A boo! Christmas the rebound. Eight of them. For Rakeem. Under three to go. Syracuse is 7 of 22, shooting Joseph a 19 footer. Abu is there at the rebound. Here's a freshman. So I'm not sure that if I'm Jim Beheim, I want Joseph shooting that ball until the shot clock is running. At least he is three. This is a three. How many times do you see it? You're doing very well. You've got a nice little working margin. You take a bad shot on one end, and then the other guys come down and knock down a three. Lacey, one of the top five three-point shooters in the ACC. He's got 12 and a couple of trays in the first half. Five-point game. Benajay across the lane. Rebound by Leonard Freeman. And a shove and a foul. And it goes on Roberson. It's three on Roberson. Approaching two to go. Here's Cat Barber off to Lacey. A two-time Mr. Basketball in high school in Alabama now flying his trade for the Wolfpack. The Orange by five. They've led by as many as eight this afternoon. Let's swing it over to Dana Jacobson. All right, Kevin. We're talking about Trevor Cooney's back earlier. That's been more of a distraction for him this season than the sanctions have been. And even that postseason ban, I talked with his parents just a few minutes ago, and they said he has been so focused just on playing basketball this year. And as for any questions about Jim Beheim and having control over this team, over this program, they said they would not hesitate to send their son here to Syracuse again. Well, that's a pretty good thing. Dana, you've had a chance to talk with some people around the program. What's your feel? on the players and their reaction to what was announced yesterday. It's really what you guys have been saying, and maybe it seems so simple that people don't want to accept it, but that th there really isn't much of a reaction. They've been dealing with the postseason ban ever since Syracuse handed that down. And so the idea and the talk of sanctions and what's ahead isn't something that they are thinking about. They are simply thinking about finishing their season the way Coach wants them to with a victory. Good stuff, Dana. Thank you very much. Leonard Freeman at the line. He's not much of a free throw shooter, only 47%. Three-point game. It was an eight-point game. We've had five times. And five lead changes here in Raleigh this afternoon. Under two to go. Laces on Benajay. Freeman comes out on B.J. Johnson. And Johnson's going to have to play now because mm -hmm. the three personal fouls on Roberson means that Syracuse gets a little smaller in there. Johnson, of course, not quite the experience that Roberson has. E.J. on top. He's a sophomore from Philadelphia. Played at Lord Marion High School.
school. That's the same high school as Kobe Bryant. Two to fire. It's Joseph with a three. Caleb Martin with the rebound. And here comes the pack with a chance to tie. Martin doing a really good job at 6'6 with long arms chasing Cooney. Cooney just really can't get open. And when he gets the ball, it's tough to shoot over Martin out on the perimeter. inside the paint around him. Now coming up on the at and at the half, join Greg Gumbel and company as they bring you highlights from a very busy Saturday in college basketball and a preview of Kentucky's pursuit of perfection. That's coming up on the at and at the half from our CBS studios in New York. The foul was called on B.J. Johnson and at the free throw line is... Abdul Malik Abu, a freshman from Boston, and they've got a couple freshmen on this team they like. Another good recruiting class from our Godfrey here at North Carolina State. And North Carolina State started playing much better when Abu went into the starting lineup. Mark Godfrey has been tinkering with that lineup all year, and he's decided that his best lineup includes Abu and Freeman in the game on the inside. 7 0 run by the Wolfpack. Benajay short. And out of bounds. Oh, and Lacey is telling his teammates, grab the ball because I touched it. <laughs> well, watch him. And, and I don't oh, no, I don't is. think he got it. But Lacey thought he got it. Look at him. He's telling his teammates to grab it. <laughs> that both sides were saying it was deflected. And the official said no. You, know, you shouldn't act guilty if you're not guilty. <laughs> I've been for a long time. Here we go with Ken Harper. Ken was a McDonald's All-America. One of four that Mark Alfred has recruited here to Raleigh. Martin, Abu, Ken Barber. And then for Freeman, deflected out of bounds. Shot clock at seven. And the Wolfpack has not been good so far today in the last 10 seconds of the shot clock. But Mark Godfrey's guys have done a nice job responding. They were down 23 to 15. And they've tightened it up on the defensive end, and they've been able to put the ball in the goal. Sturgis doesn't have the timeout to use. Lacey with the handoff to Abu. He's a top 50 recruit. He started the second half of the season. He's got a lot of bulk, and he makes a difference inside for the Wolfpack. And the lead is run. They've come back from an eight-point deficit and a timeout taken. Down by eight, North Carolina State. An important game for them in terms of seeding. On top by one on CBS. We're just before halftime. The road to the Final Four continues tonight. Over on CBS Sports Network with Mountain West doubleheader action tipping off at 8 o'clock Eastern. Wyoming will take on New Mexico, followed by Nevada at San Diego State. Only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. CBS Sports Network. Final seconds, finish it. Screen by Christmas. A three launched by Joseph. And takes us to halftime, but North Carolina State closes out the half on a nine to nothing run. Over the last 322, they're in a three-way tie for sixth. They've won five of six, and they come and take it on the orange today. Let's take it over to Dana Jacobson. All right, Kevin, thank you, Coach. A closer game than what you probably would have hoped at half. What have you been struggling with with this Syracuse zone? Well, we haven't moved the ball well enough. I think we have to move the ball a little quicker. I think it's sticking in our hands some. We've got to get it from side to side, and then we've got to use our high post area a little bit more. What are you seeing that you like that you want to see more of in the second Well, half? we've defended them pretty good. Even though we've struggled to score, they haven't scored a lot either. And so uh, we just got to keep defending them. we got to get Ralston Turner going, too. He's got to make a few shots for us here. All right, Coach, thank you. Guys, back to you. Dana, thank you very much. Down by eight, North Carolina State comes back, and they lead by one at halftime. That's the end of the first half here in Raleigh as we take you now live to our CBS studios in New York, and here's Greg Gumbel. Thanks, Kevin. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis join me for scores, highlights, and our bubble watch after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by Northwestern Mutual. You and Northwestern Mutual, stronger together. By Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Beautiful day in the Carolinas. We are in Raleigh. As we take a look at the Buffalo Wild Wings, first half statistics. 
You see the points in the paint clearly in favor of the Wolfpack as they come in. They ended the half. North Carolina State did, Dan, on a 9-0 run to take a one-point lead. Kevin, and the key to that was the backcourt. There you see Cat Barber knocking down a jump shot, and there's Trevor Lacey knocking down a jump shot. But here he drives in. That's been, when you talk about points in the paint, it hasn't been like low post power plays. That's been the kind of thing it's been. North Carolina State driving, dishing off, and getting an easy one. What do you expect in the second half? Well, I think I expect more of the same. The one thing you saw, and Mark Godfrey alluded to it in our interview with Dana at halftime, is North Carolina State has been tremendous on the defensive end, and their defense kept them in it until they started their offense started rolling a little bit. So five ties and five lead changes early on before Syracuse goes on a 12-2 run to go up 23-15. But then North Carolina State closed the half on a 9-0 run. Lacey hit his second triple, and the Wolfpack retake the lead. Here is Bart and Turner. Bernard Freeman, Lacey on the wing, and down low, Abu. That is the Wolfpack five on the floor. Three. Energy and a hand out. As did Freeman. It's going to be the orange ball. Another thing that Mark Godfrey told Dana going off at halftime is that they need to move the ball better and get Ralston Turner involved. And you saw him try to do both things right there. The ball moved a little bit more crisp. Turner got an open three. He just missed it. Roberson with the ball. He's got three fouls. Christmas is inside. Joseph is the point guard. Cooney on the wing. Here's Christmas now. Trying to work in. Benajay. That's the Syracuse five. The speed of Barber. Slithering in. And finds two. Boy, again, that time it was Abu. We've seen Anya do it, but that time Abu did a great job cutting off the King Christmas, missing another really short little jump shot. Well, this can't find it. North Carolina State, 18 and 12. Same record, Syracuse coming into this afternoon. Now, they call him Cat Barber for a reason. Yeah, I know. And he, just, I mean, he just blows down the court. If you don't make him stop, he is going all the way to the basket. Well, the top high school point guards in the country coming out of Hampton High School in Newport News, Virginia. This is off ball at 6 2. Donald, as we said before, All American. He's been starting as a freshman. Three minute outside now for Turner. Speed right there. Turner. Off to go. And Jim Beheim immediately recognizing that there's an issue here, particularly if Ralston Turner gets hot. Syracuse could be in deep trouble. It's a 14-0 run by North Carolina State. They trail by eight. Now they're up. Season in the ACC Wolfpack now up by five as we take a look at the AT&T Fast Analysis. And Kevin, just as we discussed at the start of the game, the North Carolina State guards do a great job moving the ball. Turner to Barber, immediately back to Turner, back to Barber, making that zone move. Now you got the three guys lined up along the perimeter. The quick pass to Lacey, a very good screen, and so Lacey's going to take the ball to the baseline and the step back jump shot. With Turner hitting that three-point basket, it might be that this backcourt is finally hitting on all cylinders. Orange inbounding, and here comes Cooney to Joseph. Seven consecutive misses from the field for Syracuse. They've been scoreless over five minutes. Christmas too far in the pass. Turner, North, North Carolina State to get out and go, but good hands by Joseph prevents the easy one. This is what we're talking about, Kevin. Trevor Lacey, he has been outstanding with 12 points. Turner just hit his first basket, and he can get very hot. And Cat Barber, look at that. Six points, five rebounds. He's also done a nice job distributing the basketball. You told us about an hour ago to watch for that. Sure enough, that's been a pretty good compass. Barber has it knocked away with a great rejection inside. It's the second by Christmas. They drive inside with Joseph. Robinson. More misses for Syracuse. Roberson again saves the ball. Picked up by Lacey. Four on two. Turner the three. Playing his final game in the regular season as a senior. Transfer from LSU. Turner. Cooney the triple. And it goes. Lacey. Joseph from behind. Lacey waited for him, Kevin, trying to draw the foul. That's how powerful Lacey is and how much confidence he has. A 16-0 run, now a 16-2 run by North Carolina State. Christmas has eight. 
Interesting, when they played at Clemson Tuesday, North Carolina State had a second half 25 to three runs. So these second halves have worked in their favor. In that game against Clemson, North Carolina State held Clemson without a point. Mm. Without a point for more than 14 minutes. Oh my goodness. Good ball rotation. Cross court, Lacey moves on Cooney with a triple. Roberson with the rebound. He's got seven. North Carolina State has done a really good job getting back on defense and getting that defense set. These two teams, along with Miami in a three-way tie for sixth in the ACC coming in. And there's a foul. This is a great pass ahead. And watch Lacey. He waits for Joseph to come and then tries to draw the foul. <laughs> Doesn't get the foul call. Makes a circus shot. Abu picked up the foul. They bring in B.J. Anya. The wolf back there is across the lane. Christmas. Yeah, he's held by Anya. It has been a tough, tough mm -hmm. afternoon yes. for Rakeem Christmas. Part of that is he's just not shooting the ball as well as he normally does. And the other part of it, you've got to credit the North Carolina State defense. But here's Anya once again. He waits until Christmas goes up for the shot and then gets in his way between he and the basket. Cooney missing along too. And surprising Christmas boot missing in tight. He's number three in all of college basketball and post up points this Christmas. So he has success down there. But not this afternoon. Two of 11 overall. Anya draws a crowd. Barber. Good rotation. Lacey the three. That's just what we showed you on our ATT fast analysis. They move the ball. And when they get an open shot out on the perimeter, they've got a bunch of guys out there who can knock it down. Lacey's got 17. He averages 16. He's a top six scorer in the ACC. He is at the tip of the spear in a 19-2 run by North Carolina State. A big game for them in terms of placement in the tournaments ahead. It's a nine-point lead, the biggest this afternoon here in Raleigh for North Carolina State. And the analytics would tell you that North Carolina State, Dan, has shot well this season against zone defenses in the limited number of times they have faced the zone. And that, that you would expect that with their backcourt guys. Syracuse has missed 12 of the last 13. Joseph trying to get away from Barber. He slips it away. A big guy, three on one. The look of the pass by Barber. And the hammer thrown down by Ruston Turner. He wants to throw it away. 15-33, second half. Biggest lead for North Carolina State. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball. We'll continue after this message in a word from your local CBS station. with our partners at Turner Broadcasting to combine to show you every minute of every game of the NCAA tournament on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. March madness indeed. Moments ago, Rakeem Christmas in the lane. And he gets that ankle rolled up on him, but he's right back in the game. Keep in mind, Kevin, Syracuse has only played six players in this game. The only reason Roberson went out in the first half is he picked up that third foul. You're right. Lacey. Turner. <laughs> Starts getting, when he starts making shots, he can be really, really tough. That was a deep, deep three. He shot bad from Durham. He was scoring the stand in the first half. He's got eight with a couple of threes here in the second. This is amazing. Quick hands. Kent Bubber. Four on three, the spin and the lose. Ball out of bounds off of Syracuse. 24-2 run 
Christmas just doesn't have has, just hasn't had any room at all inside. Anya pushes him out towards the help defense, and that help defense is Cat Barber. And as we have seen, when he gets the ball and gets launched in a fast break situation, he's tough to stop. Here's just the seventh player to enter the game for Syracuse this afternoon. Ron Patterson, sophomore from Indianapolis, Anya. Well, Christmas, I thought he had a pretty good position, but he catches him on the wrist. Foul goes on the team Christmas, 109th consecutive start today. On you spinning back into the lane. Christmas did hit him across the yeah, arm. That's a situation. Did. The NC State today against Christmas, they've done a great job keeping the hand straight up in the air, forcing Christmas to shoot over top. There's Anya at the line. With a look at Jim Beheim. Some interesting numbers, though. This will end Syracuse's consecutive 20 win season at 17. The streak that began back in the 97-98 season. Even if they win today, it will only be the 19th win. 17 consecutive seasons of 20 wins or more. Seven to two run for the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Well, a couple of different times, penetration inside the defense draws the defenders to try to block the shot, and Abu just follows the guy down the lane. That's a great option if you're a big man. Your guards drive into the basket, just follow him down the lane and look for that rebounding opportunity. Barber just picked up his second personal foul. Six minutes gone, second half. Benajay, the triple. Boy, that's a big basket. Mm -hmm. And again, Kevin, there's still almost 14 minutes remaining in the game. And this is Syracuse. They can come back, but they've got to tighten it up defensively. And they're going to have to start making some shots. Well, Dan Jacobson just checked in with the Syracuse bench. No problem with the ankle, they say, of Rakeem Christmas. In there now, never left. Benajay. Christmas got a piece of that one. Patterson. Roberson right into Anya. Wow, they're scoring. With a nice layup right there by Roberson. But they pushed it up the court that time. And that's something, you know, they've been getting it down the court and turning it over. But this time, they get it before the NC State defense can get set. And Roberson does a really nice job taking the ball right at B.J. Anya. Anya can do a lot of things on the defensive end, but he certainly can't move his feet really quickly, and Roberson took advantage of it. Yeah, we just talked about the conclusion of consecutive 21 seasons at 17. We knew that, of course, after the loss to UVA. Also, this marks the end of six consecutive NCAA tournaments for Syracuse. Just three times since 1983 has Syracuse not made the NCAA. Think of it. Since 1983, only three times they've not made it to the dance. That's a triple. Freeman triple teamed in zone. Knocked out of his hand. Shoved on the play. Fouled on the play. Benajay picks it up tomorrow on CBS. See why the New York Times calls the new drama Battle Creek a delight. From the creators of Breaking Bad and House Battle Creek. It's tomorrow at 10, 9 Central. Only CBS with Dan Bonner and Dana Jacobson, Kevin Harlan, Ali. After this one, Kentucky undefeated number one, Kentucky against Florida. Picked off by Lacey. And he crashes in with two off the turnover. 19 for the game for Trevor Lacey. Cooney working off the screen with a whistle. Part of the problem for Syracuse in this half has been turnovers. They turned it over four times in the first half. They've already turned it over four times in this half. Patterson just never saw Lacey. You can't get going so fast you don't find the defenders when you're trying to make a pass in that situation. Well, the Wolfpack playing well. You take it like that. I think you maybe poked in the eye there, Trevor Cooney did. Yeah, he did get poked in the eye, Kevin, but he does not look to me like he is moving as well as he normally does. So despite the fact that he said his back was feeling bad, I think it's still bothering him. Then is Andrew Roberson, picked up by Caleb Martin. Here comes the pack. They won four of their last five. 
You're not going to throw it over the King Christmas very often. Cooney, he's got an open triple. Roberson had it. In his end. And Roberson. Ten for him. We're impressed with the yeah. performance that Roberson has been able to have today. One thing about, about North Carolina State is they do have a very strong isolation offense, but we're not getting it to see in its full bloom today because of the zone that's played all the time by Syracuse and Freeman going inside. You've seen a lot of the terrific isolation basketball. Timeout taken, 11.53 in the half. And the Wolfpack pulling away. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by LG. Do game day right with LG, official partner of the NCAA. Hewitt, proud partner of the NCAA. And by Budweiser, still brew the hard way. This Bud's for you. Good job. Coming next, the Florida Gators take on the unbeaten and top-ranked Kentucky Wildcats. Then, the Stanford Cardinal tangle with the Arizona Wildcats. It's all right here on the road to the Final Four. CBS Sports. Go after United, the Kentucky-Arkansas game last week, Dan. That is one long, long basketball team with terrific defense as their calling guard. Absolutely, Kevin. And, you know, I've been one of the people at the forefront of saying this. There's no way they can finish the season undefeated, like running all the way through the NCAA tournament. And I'm beginning to <laughs> doubt myself now, particularly when they're scoring at the rate that they've been scoring over the last few games. The kids seem unfazed by the streak, too. They just continue to play. Robertson, Cooney, wheeling in. Looking for Christmas, out of bounds, another turnover for Syracuse. This North Carolina State team has had some wonderful signature wins. They beat then undefeated Duke. They own two top 25 RPM, RPI road wins against Louisville and at North Carolina. They own four wins, Dan, over top 50 RPI teams. Well, they've played a very, very good schedule. That's what he can do, Kevin. What, move the rim like that? Well, absolutely. <laughs> Lucky the basket didn't come down. 70% of his points come from dunks. But when that guy gets that close, what are you going to do? Well, the rim is still... He's got 10. And he's had to fight for every one of those 10, Kevin. That is probably, you know, probably the hardest 10 points he's scored all year. Dan, you've seen a lot of college basketball. Arguably the most improved player from last year to this. In the college I, certainly he's in the conversation, Kevin. It's hard to imagine a guy who has made greater contributions to his team after, you know, such minimal contributions in the past. But Barber had a defender coming from the left, a defender coming from the right, and he still kept the focus there to hit the jump shot. And Barber now has eight points, Kevin, five rebounds, four assists, and two steals. Not a bad afternoon. He's filling every category. Anya grabs the loose ball. Barber is out of the block. Sit off. He knocks it away. Count for two. The goaltend right there. Camp Barber. With electrifying speed, takes it coast to coast. I mean, if he does that, you may as well just stick your foot out and trip it. Because <laughs> you're not going to catch it. No way. Christmas against Daniels. Spin it away. He's the second leading shot blocker in the conference. Barber, oh, the Euro step and outside Martin, outside Turner. That's a three. got the wolf pack rolling right at the moment they're up now 55 to 36 watch barber penetrate into the lane then he finds caleb martin the ball doesn't stick in his hands at all and he finds ralston turner that's ralston's third turner's third three-point field goal of this half now barber picks up the foul right there now barber this isn't hockey so barber doesn't get an assist on that play he should but barber getting the ball right to caleb martin and again to Caleb Martin. What did Mark Godfrey tell Dana? The ball was sticking in our hands. Well, Caleb Martin looked like Bill Mazeroski there. The ball in his hands and out. 
And Ralston Turner wide open. And that secondary assist is something these coaches keep track of. Here's Benajay. Joaquin Christmas with a pirouette. And again, Anya does a great job forcing Christmas into a tougher shot than Christmas is used to having to make in there. That's great defense. The North Carolina State defense, both on the perimeter but particularly inside, has been eye-opening this afternoon. Christmas is 3 of 14. Worst shooting game is against Duke, 5 of 17. Anya. And we have a three-second violation call <laughs> inside. Well, that was Anya, not hard to see. No, Anya was about six feet further away than he wanted to be. But look at Anya here. He uses that big body, gets himself back on the ground, and then just stays between Rakeem Christmas and the basket. And Anya is a big guy. He's hard to shoot over in there. The driving Benajay knocked away by Anya. The second leading shot blocker. He's got three blocks. Martin looking inside. And Turner, and the ball out of bounds. Kevin, you notice how Anya, though, when he blocks the ball, he doesn't try to swat it out of bounds. He blocks it straight down, which gives North Carolina State a chance to pick up the ball. That's almost like a pass, an outlet pass. The ball goes straight to the floor, and his teammates are able to get it and go. He's been measured by the pros. His 7'9 arm span is the second longest ever recorded by the NBA. That won't go. That three is off. A 38-11 run by North Carolina State. Robert Roberson puts it off the rim. Picked up by Martin. Five rebounds for Caleb coming off the bench. A freshman. One thing also playing in favor of North Carolina State. The sixth most difficult schedule in college basketball. Barber. Spoon feeds on you. Benajay digs it out. Patterson. Roberson. What the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee has said for years is their standard is going to be who did you play, who did you beat. They want you to play a strong schedule. And so even though, again, I made the point before, North Carolina State's overall record isn't a gaudy record, but they have played good teams. They have beaten good teams on the road. In, got, in effect, got. the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee said, we need you to do one, two, three, four, and North Carolina State has done one, two, three, four. And maybe five. Uh, Mark Gottfried has purposely built the schedule that way. Martin missing three. Benajay the other way for Syracuse. They go up high. Roberson. Roberson called for that one at half court. Roberson doing a great job running the court today. Benajay, time pass, two on the move. But Syracuse obviously down 15 with 7 minutes and 20 seconds to go. They cannot trade baskets with North Carolina State. They've got to get stops, and then they have to score quickly. There's a foul on the perimeter. Patterson was trying to keep track of Barber with a foul. Patterson picks up his first. With a 15-point North Carolina State lead, they've led by as many as 19. And Roberson running the court very well and then sliding along, but Syracuse has a lot more sliding left to do. As you take a look at the shooting percentage of both teams, up to 44% now North Carolina State and 28%. The orange and plus 12 in the paint for North Carolina State. No points, though, coming easy for Christmas. Now, he's got a double-double, 10 points and 10 rebounds, but he has really struggled. Well defensed by the North Carolina State Wolfpack. They've done a great job staying between Christmas and the basket, forcing him to shoot over, and then, in that case, Anya just blocking the shot. So... Big man shaking his head there. It has been a hard, hard day. Barber and Turner. Lacey is in there for North Carolina State. Here's Freeman with the ball and Anya. That's the five for the pack on the floor. Barber, this is over Christmas. Barber the rebound. Knocked away by Christmas inside. We're at the shot clock at 34, so just a second off that. Patterson is out there with Roberson and Christmas. And Cooney and Benajay will be on the ball. That's the orange five on the floor. We talked to Jim Behan before the game, and one of the things he told us was that he thought this North Carolina State team, with their backcourt, was good enough that if they can get on a roll, they could be a Sweet 16 team. And you're seeing it today. When their offense gets rolling, the way they guard you, they can be an awfully tough out. Well, Mark Godfrey took his first North Carolina State team to the Sweet 16. Foul goes on Benajay, who picks up his second. He's built a very 
rugged schedule. Looking for the 19th win of the season overall. Freeman, three to five. But Mark Gottfried, among the other things he's done, he's not only gone to the NCAA tournament, but his teams have done a pretty good job beating Duke and North Carolina. That's extremely important around right here. Barber, nice block by Benigier. Picked up by Roberson. Patterson. Cooney. Patterson looking for Christmas inside. Traffic, but he gets it to go, and a foul called on the play. Kevin, even on a fast break, where Syracuse has a three on two, Raheem Christmas trying to get the ball inside. Suddenly, he's surrounded. Pretty good hands there by Trevor Lacey. He holds it up enough for the North Carolina State defense to get back. So, Christmas was wide open, and he's got four guys on. Christmas with the 10 rebounds has 13 points. It is his... 12th double-double this season, 14 in his career. Turner, three. Christmas, another rebound. Now, this is the hard part for Syracuse. Well, again, they've hardly played any guys. And now the guys who played the entire game, they're out there, they're trying to press. And only one timeout remaining. Benajay finds Roberson. That's a 9-0 Syracuse run. And just like that, we've got a 10-point game. Momentum is clearly swung. And Mark Godfrey knows it, and he calls the timeout. The problem is, Kevin, when you get this far behind, sometimes you expend all your energy trying to catch up, and right at the moment, still a 10-point lead for the Wolfpack. Get ready, America. There's a new face at Late Night, the Late Late Show with James Corden from us, Monday, March 23rd. Only CBS. This is the final game of the season for Syracuse. Self-imposed ban on postseason. And no ACC tournament, no NCAAs. And, of course, yesterday, after an eight-year investigation, five-year probation, vacated wins, Bayheim is going to have to uh, step aside a nine-game ACC suspension, reduction of scholarships, a self-imposed postseason ban. We just talked about that. This will be it for the Orange for this year. And with some interesting turbulence ahead. Kevin, I think the silver lining, if there is one in this for Syracuse, is the postseason ban lasts only this year. So that highly ranked recruiting class they have doesn't have to sit out from the postseason. So Syracuse will be eligible for the postseason next year. Yes, it'll be harder with Jim Beheim not coaching in those nine ACC games. Yes, as we go forward in the future, he will have lost his margin for error in terms of his recruiting with the scholarship reductions. But I think the key is they can play in the postseason next year. So Syracuse, I think, has a chance to get back to a relative state of normalcy. Well, you, you talk about the recruiting class. There's a clock issue right here they're trying to rectify. But a top 10 recruiting class, including a, a top 20 player, two top 50 players, and a top 75 player. I mean, it, as good a class as there is in the country right now. And I, in reading, Kevin, each of those four guys has said, yes, the sanctions don't mean anything. They're still coming to Syracuse. And here are the guys you're talking about. Seventh best recruiting class. You know, I don't know. That's really interesting. Guys compile those numbers. The sixth best, the seventh best. You know, that's like, uh, you know, the fourth fastest. Uh, you know, you can major how fast somebody is. But, you know, that's just seventh best. It could be the best. That, you know, I don't know. Dan, even this week before the sanctions were announced yesterday by the NCAA, midweek, Jim Bayan was talking to the press. He says, I think we're going to go through tremendous changes this offseason. I'm not really sure who's going to come back and what condition they're going to come back in. Got a couple kids coming back from injury. We got these recruits coming in. I mean, there's, there's a lot of moving parts to this story. Yeah, there is, but keep this in mind. Benajay will be back. Cooney will be back. Uh, and Cooney hopefully be back healthy. Dewan uh, uh, Coleman on the bench is a guy who's been missed, missed the entire season with an injury. McCullough, who is one of the top-rated recruits coming in this year, supposedly will be back and healthy after his ACL injury. Clock has been fixed. Shot clock at five. Patterson watching Barber. Lacey way outside with a three. Rebound by Christmas, who is just vacuuming in everything he sees. 12 rebounds right now. Patterson with the dive and a foul. Lacey will pick up the foul for North Carolina State. Identical records, both of them coming into today. Next Sunday, live at 6 p.m. Eastern. They'll find out who's in the tournament, who was left out, who's playing whom, and where they'll play and when. Get it all. Get it fast on the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show.
Right here on the road to the Final Four, CBS Sports. And TBSN, TNTN, True TV. Kevin here, Syracuse just broke the 10-point barrier. So it's very impressive. Syracuse playing very hard, forcing some turnovers. And one thing that we haven't seen North Carolina State do well today is play offense in the last 10 seconds of that shot clock. Last 10 positions for this North Carolina State offense. No points, 0-7, three turnovers. So I don't think you can sort of back the ball out and slow down. I think you've got to keep going. You see him finishing his there. Cooney comes over to help. Shot clock is down to 15. Freeman, Barber, Lacey. A 15 for the... extremely difficult to block out and as we've mentioned a couple of times Freeman is a guy who knows how to go get an offensive rebound Turner comes quickly up on Cooney a screen by Robertson outside Benajay now keep in mind we haven't seen much of it but both Benajay and Cooney can be very effective three-point shooters that's only a two but if those guys get hot one or both of them then this game could get tight very quickly Syracuse has made five in a row Well, the defense, you can see the orange shirts very widely spread out, and the ball had a perfect bounce for Lamar Freeman. But again, Freeman just has a way of getting himself in position. Barber again, Benjamin reaching in from behind, trying to poke it away, and picks up the orange foul. One thing that really helps, and we're talking about these guards that North Carolina State uses, two players in the ACC top 10, Dan, and it's this turnover ratio. Cat Barber, number 10, Trevor Lacey, number 8. Ball security, a big deal. And that's another play where the defense is widely spread and Martin taking advantage of it, getting all the way to the basket. Benajay will wiggle inside. And then he is fouled. Will step aside. Foul goes on Freeman for a second time. Under four to play in Raleigh on the CBS. CBS triple header is on deck from Lexington and Rupp Arena, Florida, against unbeaten number one Kentucky. As we take a look at the Capital One Cup impact performance this afternoon here in Raleigh. And Trevor Lacey, as he has done all year, has had an impact performance. There's 19 points. He's got a couple of steals to go along, a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists, and has done a very fine job defensively. But we mentioned that three, that the three guard lineup that. North Carolina State can put out there, and Lacey is a big, big part of that because of his power. That he can guard bigger guys, he can guard smaller guys, and his ability, he and Kent Barber have the ability to penetrate the defense and really create open situations for Ralston Turner. We've seen some of that today as well. On has come in for Leonard Freeman. Rebound by Turner. Those were two free throws that Syracuse could have mm -hmm. sorely used. North Carolina State has won four of five. Syracuse has lost three of four. A collision all airborne at midcourt as you saw Barber and Benajay. And Benajay picks up number four. And I think, Kevin, given the score and clock situation right now, North Carolina State can afford to run some time off the clock. Syracuse, you want to be aggressive, but you don't want to foul because from now on you're going to send NC State to the free throw line. Turner with a three. Or you could not worry about holding the ball and make threes. That's a good plan, too. One of the top three three-point shooters in the conference. On this outside, four threes, by the way, this half for Ralston Turner, the senior from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Dan, you have a big compass on this North Carolina State team, and people have said kind of, they've been a little bit up and down of late. We said they've won four or five. Performances vary. And here's another one. Number three. Turner continues to fire him from outside. Kevin, let me tell you something. When you've got three guys who can play on the perimeter the way these guys play, I think you can be in any game because, let's face it, they're not a small team on the inside. You put a boo out there, you put Anya out there, you got Freeman out there, they can 
throw some size at you, and then that backcourt makes them really tough to defend. Driving inside is Caleb Martin. So the LSU transfer, Austin Turner with a couple of threes, fouled there on Christmas. Well, here's Turner. He's open there in the corner. The defense is all going that way. And so when the ball goes to Turner, he is wide open, and wide open generally means three points. And then again, he has that's a tough catch right there. That wasn't a particularly good pass, but he pulls it down and bounces right up, knocks down the three. You're talking about those guards, and that's how you began the broadcast today, saying that was the key for the Wolfpack. Lacey with 19, Barber with 10, 17 for Turner. And Martin, you can see his free throw numbers on the season, but this is a guy who has, he started a couple of games, but he's been a very valuable guy off the bench for North Carolina State. So Mark Godfrey, in addition to developing this backcourt, has developed some depth for this NC State team. Martin had a knock away. Clooney will float inside the paint with a foul. 8-0, North Carolina State run. And if you're North Carolina State at this point in the game, what you're worried about is defending the three-point basket. There is not enough time for Syracuse to score two-point baskets and beat you. So you get out and you pressure on the perimeter, and you don't worry if they go by and get a two. In addition to what happened yesterday to Syracuse, and just as you take a look at the season overall, it's the first time, Dan, no votes for the top 25 since the end of the 07-08 season. And when they got no votes, that began in December and carried right on through. And barring a terrific comeback here, they'll finish this season, because they're done after this, at 18 and 13 and a 500 ACC record. They played some games. They played a game early in the season against Villanova where they had a big lead with just a few seconds left, and they lost that game. They have been close a couple of times. Their recent loss to Duke, if you listen to Jim Beheim after the game, he said, you know, we had shots, we just couldn't make them. You have to make shots against good team. The same thing happened against Virginia. They had a big lead early in the game and couldn't hang on to it. So this has been a good Syracuse team, but not the vintage kind of Syracuse team that we're used to seeing in the past. But again, with these sanctions, Kevin, they are going to be eligible for the postseason next year with everybody they have coming back. And with this recruiting class coming in, you would expect that Syracuse would be back not only in the postseason, but in the top 25 next year. That loud ovation there you heard was for senior Stotts Battle, who will check in here in just a second. We'll check in right now. One of three seniors who they celebrated today. Ralston Turner will leave. A senior. He made this his new home. He began, as we said before, in Baton Rouge with LSU, and he transferred here to play for Mark Godfrey. And he has 19 points in this half and in the game. Trevor Cooney. And Stott's battle is from Raleigh. He's hometown product right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. He's got it. He puts one up. And puts it to go. How about that with mom and dad and relatives here? A three for Stott's battle. A walk-on who got a scholarship this year for the first time in his fourth Christmas with a spinner. Three yeah. years he walked down, then they gave him a full scholarship this season as a thank you. Kevin, I'll tell you what, this is going to be the last game for Rakeem Christmas, and that guy has been a warrior for this team all year long. Well, as we mentioned before, and I asked you this, he's improved as much as any player this season in college basketball, but how about this other senior for North Carolina State? Doesn't play a whole lot. He's only played... 27 total minutes in his career. This is the 21st career game. And there these senior days all over college basketball. And you get a feel of what it's like here in Raleigh for this kid who's, by the way, on the academic honor roll list. An ACC academic, academic honor roll participant. As we see some kids coming in for... Well, look at Cooney and Christmas. They're together yeah. walking to the bench. Cooney... You know, he's dragging himself over there. Those guys, what great players they have been for Syracuse this year, overcoming injuries and issues. There's mom. That's Trevor mm. Cooney's mother. But both of those guys, Christmas and Cooney, they are warriors out there on the basketball court. Christmas in particular, if you saw the love he was getting from the fans up in 
in Syracuse on that Monday night game. He was signing autographs and taking pictures. And the essential part of the fabric of that community. Well, he's, he's an excellent student and just a, just a real great representative. Jim Beheim told us before the game that Rakeem Christmas represents everything that college athletics are supposed to be. And I think that's a pretty good assessment. Chase Cannon at the ball. Here is Patrick Wallace in the game. Battle with it. Chris Corciani, Jr. Yep, this is the son of the great Chris Corciani. When he left here, had the all-time ACC assist record. Stepping out of bounds with that shot, Patrick Wallace. He's from Charlotte. He's a sophomore. These kids never get to play. Here's right, a great you see chance. That, that's okay. You get yeah. a one in the box score because you just got a turnover. <laughs> right. So it doesn't see, matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you get. When you're one of these guys, doesn't matter what you get. Just as long as you get in that box score. And here's Christian Ryan. He is a junior guard for Syracuse and also in there. With the ball right now is Mike Sutton. Picked up by Bennett. North Carolina State, they're going to win their fifth game in the last six. Good way to end the season. Battle again with a three. Not the way by Corciani. To Brickhouse, who's in the contest. Chris Brickhouse is on a roll. He's a sophomore, too. Syracuse will finish the season. That's a good-looking shot outside. Put in by Carter Sanderson from Nashville. A graduate student playing in his final game in college. Mark Gottfried has got good momentum going to the ACC tournament. Well, when he's got those three guys in the backcourt doing what they're doing and those big guys inside, setting screens, playing defense, rebounding the ball. I mean, this is a this is a North Carolina State team that's playing very well at a great time. And the guards were terrific today for the Wolfpack. Lacey with 19, Barber with 10 points and seven rebounds and six assists, and Turner with 19 points, five threes, three rebounds, and a couple of assists. Christmas, his final numbers, 15 points, 12 rebounds, and making an indelible impression on the Syracuse program and beyond. Let's go to Dana Jacobson. All right, Kevin, thank you. I'm standing here with Coach Mark Godfrey. Mark, you guys finished out the season winning five of your last six. How do you build on that now going into the ACC tournament? Well, hopefully we have some confidence. I think we got a little more confidence, and we're playing much better defense. That's probably been the difference for us in the last couple weeks. And so uh, guys are sharing the ball. We got the tempo today going, which was nice. But we just need to stay confident and have a little swagger uh, as we head to Greensboro. You mentioned swagger. Ralston Turner certainly had it going in the second. Had a lot of swagger going in the second half. And you said that he needed to knock down shots. What does he bring to this team? Well, he's such a confident guy. He's a great shooter. And he's a senior. And, and uh, he's made big shots for this team a bunch this year. So, you know, sometimes I tell these guys, miss them early, make them late. And uh, he made them. He stepped up in the second half, made big ones. And I thought that was really the difference in the game. All right. Congratulations, Coach. Congratulations Thanks. on the win. And good luck in the ACC Thank tournament. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kevin, back to you. Thank you, Dana. 71-57 is the final score. North Carolina State with the win. Special thanks to our crew, by the way, who got here at 2 a.m. to set us up for our broadcast this afternoon from Raleigh. Thank you, guys. Dallas, great job. Florida takes on number one Kentucky coming up next. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. We'll take you to Greg Gumbel in New York right after these messages.